Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Um, welcome to the video where um we're gonna discuss the PSPM question for the year of 2022-2023. Uh, and in this video we're going to discuss all the question for chapter one. The first question that we're going to look at is the E question. Magnesium is widely used in construction and medicine. It occurs in nature as 24 magnesium, 25 magnesium, and 26 magnesium. And the atomic masses are 23.985U, uh, 24.986U, and 25.983U, respectively. Uh, the, determine the percentage abundance of 25 and 26 magnesium if the percentage abundance of 24 magnesium is 78.99. And the average atomic mass of magnesium is 24.3. So this question is asking about the average atomic mass. Okay, and then the value is given. Okay, so what I'm going to write down first is I'm going to write down what is the formula for the average atomic mass. The formula for average atomic mass is some kimi divided by some ki or e kimi divided by e ki. Okay, so it means that the value here is 24.3. So... Um, there will be unknown over here lah. Okay, so what we're going to do first is actually based on the value, we have to label which one is Q, which one is your M. So Q again is your abundance and M is your mass. Okay, so for the mass, usually what we use is actually based on the isotope notation, we're going to take the nuclear number. So the nuclear number is the same as the atomic mass lah. But for this case, the question has given to you the M specifically. So we're going to label each of our mass. Okay, so here I have labeled all the um, isotope as well as the masses itself. So again, U it stands for the unit. Lah. If not, usually our M is AMU, atomic mass unit. But then for the question, give the unit as U. So we're going to take it as it is. Lah. Okay, so this is our M. So we have the data for our M. Right now, we have to find our Q. Okay, so the Q given in the question is for the 24 magnesium. It's 78.99. But right now, we do not know the value for the Q of 25 and 26. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to label our Q for 24 magnesium. The value for Q of 24 magnesium is 78.99. So right now, again, our unknown is for the 25 magnesium and 26. So again, for our unknown, usually we denote it as X. Okay, so one of it, we're going to denote as X. Okay, so since the first isotope we have is 25, okay, this one I'm going to put as X percent. We do not know the Q. Okay, so usually, if one is X, the other one we're going to write down is 100 minus X. But for this case, for the 24 magnesium, it is given for us, it is 78.99. So this 100 must minus the 78.99 here lah. So minus 78.99. Okay, so it must be 100 minus 78.99 minus X. So once you calculate it, you will get the value to be 21.01 .01 minus X percent lah. Okay. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to find our x to get our abundance for 25, this one, and as well as the 26. So what we're going to do next is actually we're going to substitute all this value uh, into uh, this formula. Okay, again, this is sum. So for the Q1, M1 first, Q2, M2 the second one, and the Q3 and M3. So here what I have done is actually I have substituted all the values. Okay, the sum of abundance, okay, what is 100? Okay, so if you add up all this value, uh, it will be equal to 100 lah. Uh, usually what we're going to take is the sum of the abundance will be 100%. Okay, so once you have written down here, so it's up to you whether you can uh, use your calculator straightforward to get the x or you're going to substitute one by one point, it's fine. Okay, so if you substitute the value one by one, then you will get the final answer, your x to be 10.51. So this is the value, but then again, the question asks for um, the percentage abundance for 25 and 26 lah. Okay, so we know that for the 25 magnesium, okay, we have uh, the abundance is Q2 which is equal to X percent. So again, we know that our X is 
percent again why the percentage because the question asks for percentage abundance okay so that's for the 25 magnesium so how about the 26 magnesium so we know that here is our q3 which is 21.01 .01 minus x percent now we know that our x is 10.51 so we're just going to substitute this value to get the value of q3 once you substitute you will get the value to be 10.51 percent okay so that's the uh, answer for the question okay so this question um usually when the question asks for percentage abundance usually you only give two isotope if it give us three so uh, actually we only have to find the two lah because one of the abundance it is known 78.99 percent okay and so this is the solution for question a for question B, the equation for the reaction between SO2 and Br2 is shown below. Write the balance equation for this reaction under acidic condition. So this is an, uh, is an equation where they ask us to balance it out. Okay, so if the question gives you hint, it's acidic or basic, then this is our redox equation where we have to balance it in terms of outer. So what does it mean by outer? A stands for atom, O stands for oxygen, H hydrogen, C charge, E electron. So first what we're going to do is actually we're going to divide the equation. Okay, once you divide the equation, you have to balance in terms of this one lah, outer. Okay, so what does it mean? So let us look together. So for the first one, what we're going to divide is the SO2 will be coming SO4 to minus. Okay, so first step what we're going to balance is the atom. Okay, so for the atom here is beside oxygen and hydrogen lah. So in this case, our atom for this equation is our S. So is the equation balanced? We, for both sides, we have one sulfur, so it is balanced. Okay, next we're going to look is oxygen. So here we have four, here we have two. Okay, so since this is not balanced, we have to balance by adding H2O. So by adding H2O, we're going to add to the list number lah. So here I'm going to add 2 H2O. Okay, so why 2? Because here we have to add 2 of oxygen and 2 of the oxygen here to get the balance one. Okay, next we're going to check whether the hydrogen is balanced. Okay, so here we don't have any hydrogen. But on the left hand side, we have 4. Okay, remember... 2 here but multiply by 2. So here plus 4H plus. Okay. Next is we have to calculate the charge. So on our left hand side, here is 0, here is 0. Here we have negative 2, here we have positive 4. So total for the right hand side is positive 2. Okay. To make it balanced, we have to add electron on the more positive side. So more positive is plus 2. We're going to add the electron to make it balanced. Okay, so to make it balanced, we're going to add uh, we're going to add two more electrons. Okay. okay, so right now our charge will be here, will be 0, 0. Okay, 0. For the right hand side, negative 2, positive 4, negative 2. So here we get 0 as well. So make sure the equation is balanced on the left and the right hand side. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay, next we have to balance the Br2 to become Br minus. Okay, so now let's balance it up in terms of outer. So in terms of atom, in this case we only have one atom, bromine. Okay, and then we, as we can see, bromine here is 2. Here is only one. So to make it balanced, we're adding two here. Okay, so the atom is balanced. How about oxygen and hydrogen? We don't have any oxygen and hydrogen in this case. Okay, next we calculate the charge. Here Br2 is zero. Here is negative two. Again, we're adding electron where it is more positive. Again, more positive. So between zero and negative two, Zero is more positive. So how many electrons we're gonna run? We're gonna add. We're gonna add two electron more to make sure it's balanced both side. Okay. So now the equation is balanced. So make sure that okay. So since this is a redox equation, so for the redox equation means that we have 
transfer of electron so it means that we have lose and gain of electron so it means that the electron must be on the opposite side okay and then uh, to simplify the equation we have to balance or we have to simplify the electron in this case then the number of electron is the same so we don't have to multiply anything we just have to cancel the electron out so we have simplified the electron next we have to check whether any other species could be simplified okay so h2o is there any h2o okay that's none the same goes for so2 there's only one here so4 two minus only one for h plus br2 and br minus so since we cannot simplify any further so we're just gonna uh, combine the equation again all the on the left hand side must be combined and on the right hand side must be combined as well lah. okay so what we're gonna write or what we're gonna have for the final equation okay so this will be our final answer again for the arrangement it's fine if you want to write down vr2 first just make sure all the left hand side must be on the left hand side the right hand side must be on the right hand side okay since this is uh, for under acidic condition as we can see the final answer we have our h plus if the question asks for basic condition then what we're going to do is we're going to add oh minus on both sides and the oh minus must be uh, the same number as the h plus lah but then again the question only asks for acidic so that's the Final step for the question B. Okay, question 1C. In an experiment, a student was asked to prepare 250 ml of 0.2 molar NaOH solution, sodium hydroxide. Okay, so determine the mass of NaOH required to prepare the, to prepare the solution. Okay, so how do we get the mass of NaOH? Okay, so to calculate the mass, usually we got from the number of mole. Okay, why? Because we know that the number of mole is equal to mass divided by molar mass. Okay, but then how do we get the number of mole? What we have here is only the volume of solution and the molarity. So first what we're going to do is we're going to find the number of mole to get our mass. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to label what information that we have. Okay, so this is the information that we have. Okay, again, question wants to find the mass. Okay, how to find the mass from the mole? Okay, what we have here is our molarity. And then we have our volume. Then we can use the formula of molarity, which is molarity equal to mole solute divided by volume solution. So mole solute in this question, the solute is our NaOH. Okay, so for the volume, again, it must be in liter. Based on the information that we have, it is in ml, so we have to change it into liter. Okay, now what we have to do is we're going to substitute the value into this formula. So now we get our mole of solute is 0 0.05 mole. Again, our solute in this case is our NaOH. So now we find our mole of NaOH, then we can find our mass. Okay, how? Based on the formula, our mole is equal to mass divided by molar mass. The mole from the previous step, 0.05, our mass is our unknown, okay, which is equal to mass divided by molar mass. Molar mass is from the list of constant. Okay, so from your list of constant, your um, molar mass for sodium is 23, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is 1. Okay, then you will get your mass of NaOH to be 2 gram. Okay, so that's the uh, solution for question 1 Roman. Okay, so from the information again, how do we get that? Uh, from ma mass, usually we will get from our mole. Okay, then you have to, again, this formula must, you must memorize lah. Then you can know the next, next step. Okay, so that's for question 1 Roman. <clears throat> Next, we're going to look at for the question 2 Roman. Calculate the volume of water needed to prepare another NaOH solution with a concentration of 0 0.1 from the solution prepared in 1 Roman. Okay, so what does the question wants actually? Okay, so from the solution prepared in 1 Roman, what we have is 250 ml of 0 0.2 molar NaOH. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to 
um, prepare another solution with a 0.1 molar. Okay, so what actually happened here is that we're going to form dilution. Okay, dilution is means that from the solution, from one concentrated solution, we're going to form, we're going to add H2O to form a diluted solution. So for our other solution, we do not know how many ml is it yet, but we know that we want it to be 0.1 molar. So here. Yeah. So this is what we, um, I'm going to just going to label, this is the concentrated Okay, the stock solution, this is the diluted. Okay, so how do we find the volume of the new concentration here? Then we have to use the formula M1V1 is equal to M2V2. Well, for the one we're going to use for the concentrated and the two is for the diluted. Okay, so I'm just going to substitute the value into the formula itself. And then I will get the volume to be 500 ml. Again, this one is for the diluted, the V2. Okay, so right now I know that my volume here is 500 ml, this one. But then again, the question asks to calculate the volume of water. It does not mention that it wants the volume of the diluted. It wants the volume of water needed. Okay, so to form our diluted one, our V2, okay, how do we get 500? It's actually... When we're adding the concentrated plus H2O. Okay, so I'm just going to write down my V2 is actually when we're adding V1 plus volume of H2O. Again, V2 is my diluted. V1 is my concentrated. So I'm just going to substitute. My diluted is 500 ml. My concentrated is 250. And volume of H2O is our unknown. Okay. Then you will get the volume of H2O to be 250 ml. Okay. So if you only stop your work until here, okay, but then again, that is only the volume of diluted. The question was the volume of water. Okay, so again, so original is 250, we become 500. So the 250 is from the concentrated. So another 250 is your volume of H2O. Okay, so that is the step for uh, the solution for 1C. The last one, question D. The reaction equation involved in depletion of ozone layer as shown below. O3 plus NO will become O2 plus NO2. Okay, an amount of 0.74 gram of O3 reacts with 0.76 gram of NO. Identify the limiting reactant. Okay, again, so if the question, uh, usually the question gives you two reactants. If both of the uh, reactant, we have information about it. For example, in this case, we have this 0 0.74 gram. This one is 0 0.67 gram. So first step is actually we have to find the limiting reactant. Okay, but then again, the question did ask identify the limiting reactant. So how do we identify the limiting reactant? Usually, we're going to compare one mole with one mole and another one mole with the other mole as well lah. okay but then um what we have now is only the mass so what we have to do we have to change the mass into the mole for these two reactants okay so this is the number of mole for the reactant itself lah. Okay, and then just check whether the equation is balanced or not so oxygen here we have four here we also have four nitrogen one and one okay so once the equation is balanced Okay, and then we know lah. Then we can compare. Okay, so since the question asked to identify the limiting reactant, usually we're going to compare with the same product lah. So if I compare O3 with O2, my NO must compare with O2 as well. If I want to compare with NO2, this one I'm going to compare. My NO must be compared with NO2 as well lah. Okay, since the question for the two Roman determine the mass of NO2 that will be produced, so for this part, I'm just going to compare straight away my O3 with my NO2, my NO with NO2 as well. So how do we do the comparison? Again, based on the equation, we know that 1 mole of O3 is equivalent to 1 mole of NO2. So we know that my mole for O3 is 0 0.01542 mole. Okay. 
but right now we do not know the mole for NO2 okay so since this is one to one ratio then we know that the if we use O3 our NO2 produced will be 0 0.0154 mole okay so this is for um, if I use my O3 again so this is for the first comparison O3 that's what we're going to do is for the NO so for the same case one mole of NO is equivalent to one mole of NO2 so now once we have done the comparison we can see that when you use O3 you're going to form 0 0.0 542 mole of NO2 but then if you use NO you're going to form 0 0.03 mole okay so delimiting reactant is the one which produce less amount of product uh, less product itself so in this case our limiting reactant is our O3 because it produce less NO2 so I'm just going to write down in um, a sentence 3 produce less amount of in this case our product that we compare is our NO2 less amount of NO2 again the question asks to identify so we have to write down lah so now we know that the O3 is the limiting reactant some question did ask about the excess some did not but just because we know that this one is the limiting so we know that NO is the excess reactant so just gonna write it down even though the question did not ask for it but it's fine okay so right now we know that the limiting reactant is o3 so next for any step of comparison any step for the stoichiometry we have to compare with o3 okay next is determine the mass of no2 that will be produced okay so we have known that O3 is our limiting reactant. So we have to find again before we find the mass, we find the mole. Okay, so even though we have done the step for question one, okay, just I'm gonna write down again the step for the stoichiometry again to find the product. We have to compare with the limiting, which we have done for the step one. This is for the mole. Question asks for the mass. Okay, so what's the formula for the mass? Uh, for the mass. Again, mass is equal to the number of mole times smaller mass. The number of mole in this question is 0 0.01542. Our molar mass, okay, again, refer to your the list of constant. Here is NO2. So, N is 14 plus oxygen must have 2. Lah. Okay, then you will get the mass to be 0 0.71 gram. Okay, so for this type of question again, um, for this question, they did ask you identify the limiting reactant. Even though the question did not mention identify the limiting reactant, again, if you have both information of the reactant, you have to do lah this step, the step of the um determining the limiting reactant. Then, if the question asks for the excess or the product, we have to compare back with the limiting as well. Okay, so that's it for the video discussing um, question chapter 1 for the year PSPM 2022-2023.